Today she Rabbi, day 18 of our readings of the 252 Vaishnavas. Um, Varta number three, Chacha Hari Vamsji, Sub Vaishnavan Kujeshi Krishna, Shri Gusaiji Ki Jeho. Jay Shirade. Part 4. One day Shri Gusaiji travelled to Gujarat. He arrived in one village and set up camp. He sent one of his accompanying Brajwasis to go and fetch some supplies. That Brajwasi brought many supplies from the village. When he came back, he told Shri Gusaiji that there was not even one Vaishnav in that village. Shri Gusaiji remarked, This means that Harivamsji has not passed through this place. If he had, there would be at least one Vaishnava here. Chacha Harivamsji was indeed such an accomplished Vaishnava that wherever he went, he always made some Vaishnavas. Shri Gusaiji often praised Harivamsji in this way. Part 5. Another time, Hari Vamsji and Krishna Bhatt were travelling together to Ujjain. On the way, there was one village where a Kshetri disciple of Sri Gosaiji lived. That Vaishnava spotted Hari Vamsji coming from the roof of his shop. He came down and bowed low to Hari Vamsji. The Kshetriya then took Hari Vamsji to his shop. Sitting down, sitting him down, he asked if he could get any water. Get him any water. Hari Vamsji gave him his water pot. The Kshetriya left Hari Vamsji's pot and filled his own, which he offered to the to Sri to the Hari Vamsji, who gladly drank from it. Having drunk, Hari Vamsji stood up to leave. The Kshetriya said that his house was not far away and invited him to come there. Hari Vamsji replied that he would definitely visit that Kshetriya's house the next time they came along on that way. Saying this, Hari Vamsji moved on. As they proceeded on their way, Krishna Bhatji spoke to Chachaji. This Kshetriya does not seem to have any pushti manners. Why did you accept to drink from his pot? Hari Vamsji replied, I am not able to comment on that Kshetriya's behaviour. All I know is that when he took the name initiation from Sigur Saiji, I was present there at that time. I was remembering that day and so when I was in his shop I drank from his water pot. This goes to show that Sarvatma Bhav, the ability to Sri Sri Takuji everywhere in all things and at all times, was perfected in Hari Vamsji's natural personality. He had a very pure sentiment for all Vaishnavas. Krishna Bhatt remained silent after hearing these words. Many days later, Hari Vamsji happened to be passing through Ujjain. He came to that same village. Hari Vamsji went to the Kshetriya's shop and the latter was so happy and most respectfully invited Hari Vamsji into his home. He gave him some lovely supplies and let Hari Vamsji do the preparation. Hari Vamsji cooked, made the offerings and later accepted the prasad. As night fell, the Kshetriya offered Hari Vamsji a thousand rupees and all the silver and gold jewellery that he had at home with the instruction for it all to be taken to Sri Gusaiji. I do not need a lot to survive here, he said, therefore those things that belong to my lord should be with my lord. Hari Vamsji took all of these to Sri Gusaiji and Sri Gokul. Hari Vamsji then bowed low to Sri Gusaiji on behalf of the Kshetriya and showed him all that he had brought. Sri Gusaiji, he had them all. Of the all he had brought Shri Gosaiji. He had them all taken to Sri Nathji's store. In this way, the Kshatriya also perfected the mood of omnipresent divinity. Omnipresent divinity. Wah. Part 6. One night, Sri Gosaiji came into the courtyard because he needed to pass water. He was standing there and began to chat to Hari Vamsji. They both lost their body consciousness as they spoke. The conversation was so indescribable that they forgot their bodies. At that time, Sri Gosaiji was holding a large... Sp- spouted pot. He didn't even notice how heavy it was. Hari Vamsji did not also even think that he should take the pot from Shri Gosaiji's hand. As they spoke, they became filled with the nectar of divine love, so much so that they forgot where they were. It was a night in the hot season. A little later, Shri Gosaiji's personal assistant came to him and told him that it was time to get up. Shri Gosaiji only then left that spot. Having performed his routine ablutions, he applied oil to his body and then bathed and entered the temple. He was absorbed absorbed in thought of the satsang all the while, and Hari Vamsji did not even remember his body for three whole days afterwards. One day after bathing, Hari Vamsji went up to the temple on Sri Giriraji and stood in front of it. He could see that Sri Naji was still fast asleep. It was time for the conch shell to be blown, but Hari Vamsji stopped it from being sounded. The temple's inner servants were all standing there. Soon after Sri Gosaiji came up there after his bath, he asked those servants why the conch had not been sounded. They told him that they had been about to sound it, but that Hari Vamsji had stopped them, and that was why they were all standing there. <laughs> 
Sri Gosaiji asked Hari Wamsji why he had stopped the conch from being sounded, and he replied that Sri Naji was still sounding, sleeping soundly, and that was why he forbade it. Hearing this, Sri Gosaiji kept quiet, and after a little while, Sri Gosaiji did have the conch sounded and then made the early morning offerings and stepped outside. He then told the servants, You should not delay Sri Takaji's seva. At the correct and usual time, you should stand in front of the temple, clap your hands, and then sound the conch to wake up the Lord. These were the instructions Sri Gosaiji gave to those temple servants. From that day on, they began to perform their seva in exactly the way he had taught them. Bhav Prakash the teaching of this story is that in Sri Acharya's Seva program, the Lord is served as a child. A child should be woken up before dawn, otherwise their intelligence will be damaged. Sri Acharya had given this very instruction to his son Sri Gopinachji. It became a standard teaching from then on. This is why Sri Gosaiji taught Sri Nachi's temple servants as he had done. Part 8. One afternoon at the time of the Borg Seva, Sri Gosaiji was going into the Lord's sleeping changer, chamber. Sri Naji was looking directly at Sri Gosaiji. Chachaji was standing outside enjoying the holy sight of Sri Naji. Seeing the way that Sri Naji was staring at Sri Gosaiji, Chachaji supplicated, O oh, Maharaj, where are you going? Sri Naji is staring directly at you. Sri Gosaiji then replied, What to do? I have to do what I have to do. Until Sri Gosaiji entered the sleeping chamber, Sri Naji's gaze was on him. In this way, by the grace of Sri Gosaiji, Sri Naji granted Chachaji his direct experience. Part 9. Once when Sri Hariwamsji was sitting close to Sri Gosaiji, the latter became angry with him. There was a stool nearby and Sri Gosaiji hit him with it. Then both of them spent two whole days in a mood of separation. Why? Bhav Prakash, because Sri Gosaiji had so much affection for Hari Mamsji, knowing that he was feeling pain, Sri Gosaiji felt pangs of separation for two days. Part 10. One day Sri Gosaiji happily addressed Sri Rukmini Bahuji. You see all the Vaishnavas? They are all mine. They all represent parts of my body. Sri Rukmini then asked Sri Gosaiji, which limb is Hari Mamsji? Sri Gosaiji replied, Hari Wamsji is the dark pupils of my eyes. A little while after this, Chachaji stumbled on something and hurt himself. At that time, Sri Gosaiji's eyes began to hurt, give him pain. Sri Rukmini asked him, Why are your eyes hurting like this? Sri Gosaiji told her, Hari Wamsji suffered a blow and has pain. That's why my eyes are paining. When Chachaji's pain subsided, then Sri Gosaiji's eyes recovered. In this way, Sri Gosaiji revealed the true form of all his Vaishnavas. So we will take a rest here today at the end of part 10. Part 11 will proceed tomorrow. Jai Jai Shri Radhe.